Yesterday we derived the common source amplifier using drain feedback bias and drain feedback is a way of uh, fixing the current through a transistor rather than its gate source voltage. Okay. The whole idea is that even if uh, the threshold voltage changes, the VGS will automatically change and restore the GM to the intended value and so on. Okay. Now for drain feedback bias. We need feedback from drain to the gate. Okay. Now this will ensure that VGS is appropriately set so that the drain current is I naught. Now in a common source amplifier we also have to apply the input and output and we should not have this connection between drain and gate. So we effectively open circuited by using a very large resistance, how large we computed yesterday and we could also use a large inductance but again inductance are more, inductances are more bulky and cumbersome, we do not use them often. Then the input is AC coupled on this side, the output, the load is AC coupled on the output side. Okay. Now the virtue of this compared to the earlier common source amplifier is that uh, in this case the I mean the earlier common source amplifier with fixed VGS bias is that if you build both of these let us say large numbers of these with different MOS transistors you will find a smaller spread in the gain okay the gain will vary a lot less and similarly if you exercise it over temperature the gain will vary a lot less okay because GM variation is a lot smaller here compared to there. Now we saw that the actual gain of this V0 by Vi was and what was in the numerator GMRG RL minus RL okay. and this approximates to minus GMRL if Rg is much greater than all these terms, okay. GMRSRL plus RS plus RL. So that gives you a realistic value for Rg as well, okay. The bottom line is, I mean, the reason to calculate all these transfer functions and find these conditions is that you should be able to design these yourselves, okay. So, what will you be given when you are asked to make an amplifier? You will be told what the input source is, I mean what kind of an input source it is and what kind of a load you have, okay. So, from that and the and of course, you will be told what gain you need. So, you should be able to choose the transistor operating point based on the gain and you should be able to choose the component values. The source and load are given, but there are so many other components required to complete the biasing and add the signal to bias and so on such as in this case RG C1 and C2. So, you should also be able to pick all these values not at random but uh, through proper calculation. Okay. So, that is the point of uh, carrying out all these calculations. right? So, that in fact uh, in this case compared to the earlier circuit we have only one extra component for the operating point which is RG and you have to choose it to be sufficiently large. Okay. Thankfully, the MOS transistor's gate current is very small, so you can choose RG to be as large as you want without worrying about any voltage drop at all. Okay. Then C1 and C2, how do we choose them? What are the values? C1 has to be much more than what? Huh? First of all, on I mean with VI deactivated with VI set to 0, we have RS on one side and whatever is the resistance looking between those terminals. What is that value? RG plus? Yeah. So, it comes out to be RG plus RL by 1 plus GM RL. Okay. Let me 
expand on that a little. C2 is a short circuit basically for signal frequencies and he says that the expression for the looking in resistance is RG plus RL by 1 plus GMRL. Does it make sense? Is, some, is there some intuitive extreme case that you can think of for which you already RL equal? Oh, okay, put RG equals infinity, it should become infinity. Okay, that is fine. Then any other extreme case? Miller effect, yeah, there is Miller effect for sure. But another extreme case you can think of, that is correct. Obviously, if RG is infinity, then there is no feedback at all and the input resistance should be infinite. But what other extreme case can you think of? Yeah, actually that is a good one also. If you have GM equals 0, then again there is no active element. You simply have RG and RL in series. Okay. What else? What, what should be the answer if RL is infinity? by gm does it make sense yeah so if you essentially you will have rl is zero so you have gm vgs okay sorry rl is infinity so and you have rg like that okay so if you have some vx here the current goes in there there will be gm times Vx. So, the input conductance is Gm or input resistance is 1 by Gm. Okay? I mean some of these things you can verify. First of all to check your answers in the exam which is a sort of trivial purpose but also uh, later when you design more complicated things you will get more complicated expressions and it is very easy to make mistakes in all these things. You should be able to look at the expression and tell whether it makes sense or not. Okay? And what is it looking back this way? What is R out? It is actually a very symmetrical expression, right? Rg plus Rs divided by 1 plus Gmrs, okay? The same expression with Rl replaced by Rs. So, anyway, I mean the point of calculating these is that C1 has to be much greater than 1 by omega times Rs plus R n and similarly C 2 has to be much greater than 1 over omega times R L plus R out. Okay? And these results are also useful because later you will see that in this particular case we have to choose R G to be very large compared to something. There is another case the exactly the same topology where R G will be chosen differently and the circuit serves a very different purpose. Any questions about this, the drain feedback amplifier? What is it? Oh, you mean how to derive the expression? So, let us say you apply some V test here, this will be Gm times V test and you have to find this current and that current is basically, so let us call it I test. So, this voltage will be, what is it? If this is ground, what is the voltage here at this node? V test minus Rg times I test. and the current here will be that divided by RL. So, you just have to write Kirchhoff's uh, current law there. So, G m times V test plus that voltage V test minus R g times I test divided by RL and that whole thing equals I test, right, because that is what is coming in there. Yeah. So, from this you can uh, solve for I test and consequently for V test by I test, right. So, you will get I test to be G m plus 
1 by R L times V test divided by if I take it to the other side 1 plus R G by R L and the reciprocal of this gives you the resistance ok. Any other questions? So, this is another way of uh, realizing a common source amplifier. In fact, the common source amplifier part is the same, it is only the biasing that is different ok. There are many different ways of biasing that we will see. And the important thing to remember is that this biasing uses negative feedback. Oh, that uh, it is defined like that. But so, first of all, yesterday I was looking for the resistance that appears across C2. So, that is this RL plus this R out, ok. And typically, I mean, this is a matter of definition. You will be told what to find when you say, when you are asked for uh, the output resistance. Typically, if this is the input terminal and that is the output terminal of an amplifier, this is the output resistance and this is the input resistance. The load is connected to the output port, but it is outside this ok. But I mean you will be told what to do, I mean I could easy, equally well ask you for this in which case it will be R L parallel whatever we found ok. So, the important thing to remember though is that uh, the input resistance depends on R L. So, you have to have R L in place ok, because the value of R L can influence the input resistance. Similarly, R out depends on R S ok, so that has to be in place. Anything else? So, that is about drain feedback biasing, but it turns out that this is not the only way to realize common source amplifiers. In fact, this business of uh, obtaining the correct VGS from the current. So, because of negative feedback, this VGS will get adjusted to the right value. So, that the transistor carries a current of I naught ok. Yes. R in and R out for? No, R in and R out, I mean just like anything else, they are defined for the linear incremental circuit, right. So, if you are not considering incremental quantities, then uh, it is not a linear circuit at all, ok. So, When I say C1 and C2 should be short, so what it means is that V i is small in some sense, meaning the higher order terms of the Taylor series are negligible for the amplitudes of V i. But importantly, when C1 is a short, it means that if you apply some increment here, exactly the same increment comes on the other side. So, it is all for the incremental picture, which is by definition linear for us, ok. So, R in and R out are really small signal input and output resistances. In the operating point, I mean you can calculate these quantities. I could for instance apply a large V test and find V test by I test, but the circuit itself is non-linear. So, that quantity may not have any significance ok. Actually that uh, so since you reminded me of that another thing. So, another way to think of see the way we evaluated C 1 and C 2 is by evaluating the transfer function with C 1 and C 2 in place. Also evaluating it with, with uh, C 1 and C 2 replaced by short circuits and making the two identical that gave us some constraints right. So, the transfer function with C 1 replaced by short circuit should be the same as transfer function with C 1 in place. So, find the value of C 1 that was the problem we set ourselves up with and we found the constraint on C 1. So, if C 1 is larger than something then uh, <coughs> that will be satisfied. So, essentially we did everything in the linear uh, uh, phasor domain and then found it. This is another way to think about it. So, let me uh, show it for the output capacitor exactly or maybe both ok. First let us just look at the operating point condition ok and let me take a particular example 200 microampere and my usual favorite MOSFET with Vion C ox of uh, 
100 microampere per volt square and W by L of 1. What will be this voltage? By now, you should be able to answer this even if I ask you in your sleep, right? 200 microamperes through my MOSFET. What is that voltage? How much? 3 volts. Yeah. What is the drain source voltage? Also, 3 volts in this case. Now, let us say I connect a capacitor and some resistance in series RL. Okay. I connect it there and leave it there for a long time. Okay. What will be that voltage? 3 volts. Okay. Because eventually, no DC can flow through the capacitor. This uh, initially when you connect it, something will flow depending on the initial charge on the capacitor, but eventually this will reach 3 volts and the current through RL will be 0. Okay. And what will be the voltage here? Exactly the same logic. Even you connect it, some transient current may flow, but after a while the currents will become 0 and this will be 3 volts. Okay. Now, let me uh, switch gears and ask you something else. So, what I want at the gate is 3 volts plus VI, right, at the gate of the MOS transistor. I want a bias voltage of 3 volts and the input in input signal V i to be added to that, right. In fact, the very first circuit I wrote, I drew here, I put the two voltage sources in series V i and 3 volts. And in fact, I said we cannot make uh, these floating sources and we do not have multiple DC sources and so on, okay. So, uh, that is how I came up with uh, this business with capacitors. Now, let us say that we know we cannot make this 3 volt voltage source, but what else can you think of? some black box that will hold a constant 3 volts across it. A voltage source of 3 volts of course will do it, okay. But what else will maintain a constant difference of 3 volts across itself? Capacitor. capacitor. I mean what ca kind of capacitor? What should be the charge to 3 volts, but what should be the size of the capacitor? Hey, when it should be, when it should look like the voltage source, how much should be the charge? How much should be the capacitance? infinite and infinitely you cannot distinguish between a, between an infinitely large capacitor and a voltage source, right. An infinitely large capacitor charged to 3 volts will look exactly like a voltage source, okay. So, essentially you can also think of these bypass capacitors as when at the operating point they will get charged to 3 volts. Of course, they are not infinitely large, but they are large, okay. Now, what happens is if I apply V i here. this voltage does not change, okay. And also I impose the condition on V i, remember V i is not DC, okay. So, if V i is DC, if V i is let us say 1 volt, what will happen is eventually the voltage on this capacitor will change. But V i is a sinusoid of some frequency. So, this C 1 essentially acts like a battery, the voltage across it will change, but will change very little over one cycle, okay. So, that is why you can also think of all these uh, AC coupling capacitors as fixed batteries, okay. Although I said this is not possible, we are realizing an approximation to this type of floating batteries using large enough capacitors. But for this to work, our signal has to be some sinusoid, okay. It cannot be DC because if it is DC, it will eventually change it because for instance, what happens if V i is 1 volt, what happens to this voltage? If this V i is 1 volt constant, what will happen eventually to that voltage? Huh? It will become 2 volts, that is all. The left side will be 1 volt, right side will be 3 volts, it will be 2 volts. It will eventually change, however long it may take. But if it is alternating like this, it will change a little, okay. So, the voltage here will go up a little and then go down a little and so on. But the amplitude of that will be very small, okay. And this, uh, when I, uh, this is what will happen, okay. Now, of course, when I calculated the uh, everything in the incremental domain using phasor analysis and said that the reactance of this is very small, this is the condition I was imposing, right. If the reactance is very small, then the voltage across it, which is the current times reactance will also be small, okay. So, the another way to think about these uh, bypass capacitors and coupling capacitors and so on is that they are like uh, DC batteries, uh, which will hold the voltage with the condition that you cannot apply DC signals to the circuit, okay. If you apply AC signals, 
you have chosen the capacitors to be sufficiently large. So, over one cycle any change in voltage is very small ok. So, they are really like batteries. Is that clear? Any questions? So, now uh, we have the circuit which uh, with negative feedback will adjust the gate source voltage such that the MOS transistor will carry a current of I naught ok. Now, uh, let us say you have an integrated circuit that is you have a piece of silicon on which you have a number of transistors close to each other. So, they will be at the same temperature they will have the same parameters and so on ok. So, essentially they are known as matched pairs if you have a couple of uh, transistors which are closely thermally coupled. So, that they are, they are at the same temperature as well as they have the same parameters to begin with they are matched pairs. So, if I replicate this gate source voltage across another transistor and ensure that it is in saturation region I apply a large enough VDS ok. What will be the current through this transistor? What will be the current? I naught it will be I naught right because its parameters are the same and its VGS is the same as this of course, we will ignore the dependence on VDS for now ok. So, its current will also be equal to I naught ok and this structure is known as a current mirror because if you have one current source you can effectively generate multiple current sources. I do not have to have just one and I will show it like this this line running through the MOS transistor means that it is connected to the gate and also taken to another place ok. I can have any number of them because again with the MOS transistor the gate current is 0. So, regardless of how many connections I make like this the current in this transistor does not change ok. Is this fine? Current is because uh, are you convinced that this gate source voltage will be this much ok. So, then that is applied across this and I will write m 1 equals m 2 meaning that they will have the same uh, parameters ok. Then assuming that m 2 is in saturation it has to carry a current of I naught ok. And this is known as a current mirror now many of you may be looking at the circuit and wondering like how do we get a current source to bias this ok. Uh, I have not given the answer to that, but at least I have told you that if you have one current source you can make 100 of them using this ok. So, all of them if they are in saturation will carry I naught and also it does not have to be exactly I naught itself let us say you want a different current you want twice that what will you do? You can put two in parallel effectively you can use a transistor whose width is double that of this and length is the same. So, this will give you twice the current ok and you can have uh, multiple combinations like this. This type of circuit is very common on an integrated circuit because you do have mass transistors and they are all on the same silicon die they will be at the same temperature and so on ok. And a very useful block because you have a number of amplifiers you will need current sources to bias all of them. How will you generate them? You have to use a current mirror to generate them. I mean, let us assume that one current source exists somewhere, we will say how to do that. So, if I have 2 W by L, what will be the current through this? It will be mu n C ox by 2 times 2 W by L times V g s minus V t square. Now, V g s minus V t is this much right. So, mu n C ox W by L square. So, if you compute the squares this will go away and ok. I mean easier way to think about it is that you connect two of these in parallel that is effectively 2 W by L ok, because 
as I've shown before. If you have a MOS transistor, there is a certain width and this side is the source, this side is the drain and this is the length. This width is basically the width across which the current flows. Okay. The current is assumed to be uniformly distributed along this dimension along I mean across this entire width and the total current is I naught okay and let us say I have two of these. So, the total current here is I naught and here it is I naught okay. Now, I can think of the combination as a current flowing across a width of 2, 2 w right. If this is 2 w and this is L, the conditions here and there look exactly the same ok. Is it ok? So, if you have two transistors of uh, width uh, w1 and w2 and the length is L, you connect them in parallel and you have three terminal element. What is meant by connecting them parallel in parallel is all terminals are corresponding terminals are connected to each other ok. If this is w1 and w2 and the lengths are the same, this is equivalent to a single transistor of width w1 plus w2 and length L ok. I mean oh here in the circuit. So, I have not shown what it is connected to, but whatever it is connected to should be such that these transistors are in saturation. If you want you can imagine voltage sources across each of these which will keep them in saturation, but of course, we want to make useful circuits with those right. So, we will see what can we can do, but you can always find some condition where it is in saturation. If it is in saturation it will be I naught obviously, if it is in triode region it is not going to be I naught right. It will be operating elsewhere and the current will be smaller than I naught. Any questions about the current mirror? It is a way of uh, replicating currents ok and because it needs matched transistors that is circuit I mean transistors with the same parameter and also operating at the same temperature because if the temperatures are quite different then the parameters the mobility and threshold voltage will be different. This kind of thing is practical only on an integrated circuit that is all these transistors must be physically on the same die ok, otherwise uh, they would not be well matched. Yeah. No, lowest tolerance, but uh, on an integrated circuit what happens is that, so let us say muon C ox is supposed to be 100, but it is 70, it will be 70 for all of them ok, because ICs are fabricated I mean all transistors on an IC are fabricated simultaneously on the same machine with, uh, so the matching between transistors on an integrated circuit is very good and especially when they are very close to each other. In fact, lot of uh, circuits on an IC exploit this matching ok, whereas you cannot do that for uh, uh, circuits with discrete components, whereas discrete components you get a 1 kilo ohm resistor and you can expect that to be reasonably 1 kilo ohm plus minus 1 percent, it is not difficult to get they are pretty cheap, whereas here it will be 1 kilo ohm plus minus 30 percent probably. Okay. Any questions about this? This is the current mirror and this also gives you an alternative way of realizing a common source amplifier which he suggested the other day. Uh, what did we do earlier? We had this way of biasing a transistor ok. So, let us say 3 volts and 4 volts and we turned this into with this biasing we added the appropriate signal. and turn this into a common source amplifier. I am not showing the extra components we need for biasing ok. Now, again the problem with this was with a fixed uh, VGS of 3 volts as threshold voltage changes GM changes a lot. The only change we have to make to this is this should not be a fixed 3 volts, but it should be adapted based on the transistor parameters. So, one way to do that is feedback around the same transistor. 
that is what we did using drain feedback. Alternatively, if you do have these matched pairs, what you can do is that one, right? It is basically a current mirror arrangement. Exactly the same I had as I had drawn earlier. Now I am showing it as though I had the dumb arrangement of uh, applying a fixed 3 volts to the gate source. Now I have a smarter arrangement. This is generated using a transistor. Now, if all the parameters are identical, let us say this is 200 microamperes, sorry, all parameters have the nominal values, I naught is 200 microamperes and the transistor parameters are 100 microamperes per volt square and 1 volt of threshold voltage. This will be 3 volts, okay. But let us say this 1 volt changes to 1.2 volts, what will happen to this voltage? What will happen to that voltage? How much? 3.2. So, it is V t plus the overdrive, right? So, it will be 3.2. Similarly, if uh, the mobility drops, then again you will have some change in that. So, this voltage is not fixed to 3 volts, but depending on the transistor characteristics, it is adaptive. So, this is a better way of uh, making it. And on an IC, you do make this. This is quite uh, easy to make, okay. So, this kind of biasing is better. Now, the question is how do we turn this into a common source amplifier? What should we do? You understand? I mean, instead of applying a fixed 3 volts between these two, I have now derived the bias voltage with this arrangement, okay, because this adjusts itself to transistor conditions, whereas the other one would be fixed, okay. Now, I have to apply an input. So, this is my amplifier device M1. I have to apply an input to this and take the output from there so that it mimics this, okay. So, please help me out how to complete the circuit. What did we do? So, let me go back to the original circuit where to bias the gate, I had these resistors to bias the drain. I also needed another drain bias resistor. I connected the load RL over there. This is just the old circuit, you do not have to write this down. Okay. So, this is my old circuit. Now, instead of uh, biasing it with this, this and the supply voltage, I have this type of biasing. Okay. I have to add the input to the gate voltage. So, what should I do? At the gate, I need to have the bias voltage, whatever it is, let us say 3 volts plus VI. So, what should I do? Capacitor, okay. Like that, okay. So, what will be the incremental voltage here at the gate? Please calculate it. For this circuit, what will be the incremental voltage at the gate? You understand the question? I mean, Yeah. What will be the incremental voltage of the gate? Assume that C1 is so large that it is a short circuit at the signal frequency. So, please calculate, calculate. So, what is the incremental voltage here? V i by? V i by 1 plus GMRS. Why does this happen? And is this sub? Uh, what do you want? What is the incremental voltage we want at the gate? Approximately V i, okay. So, is this close to V i or much smaller than V i? Much smaller. You expect GMRS product to be generally quite large. Why does this happen? Which is a short? So, if you look at the incremental equivalent of a transistor with its drain and gate shorted to each other, okay. What is this? This will be a control current source GM VGS with the controlling side shorted to the control side, okay. So, between these two terminals, what is the equivalent? Huh? What is the equivalent element? Conductance of GM or a resistance of 1 by GM, okay. 
So effectively we have V i R s and 1 by G m and this 1 by G m is a small resistance. So, you expect that the voltage here is very small, the division ratio is very small. Okay. So, how do I fix this situation? I want almost V i to appear there, almost all of V i to appear there. What should I do? Register where? So, the easiest thing is just have a large resistance there again its value does not matter for the operating point because in operating point condition no current flows through it. Now, the equivalent we have is R g. So, if you make R g much more than R s then almost all of V i will appear there okay. and this is something worthwhile remembering also if you do have a transistor with its uh, drain connected to gate then between drain and source the incremental equivalent is a resistance of value 1 by g m. Okay. This is fine and this combination or this particular connection essentially the transistor is a 3 terminal element and we have got a 2 terminal element now right. Okay. So, if you plot I versus V of this 2 terminal element what will you get? This is the total V and total I. this is the this is not the incremental equivalent this is the total i versus total v what will be the expression for first of all what region will the transistor be in saturation because vgs equals vds it will be in saturation so what is the expression for i so what is the characteristic yeah please be louder i cannot hear <laughs> now you know what it is right what is it what is it parallel Parallel what? <laughs> Parabola, yeah. So, it is the same as I d versus V g s, right, in saturation region, that is all that is there to it. So, okay, looks like a square law stuff. What other element do you know which looks vaguely like this? Whose IV characteristic? What other two terminal element do you know whose IV characteristics looks like this? Diode. So, Diode of course has an exponential behavior, this has square law and this kind of connection it is known as a diode connected transistor and that is sometimes useful and the slope of this will be basically G m at the operating point. So, incrementally this will be equivalent to a conductance of G m or a resistance of 1 by G m. Okay you have to find the operating point and then find the equivalent. Is that okay? Turns out that if you do this with a bipolar transistor which is also a 3 terminal element what you get is exactly the diode that you are familiar with, with the exponential characters. Anyway, that is an aside. So, this diode connected transistor is an integral part of every con current mirror. So, you cannot connect the input directly, you need to have this resistor, but anyway, this is not a very difficult solution, quite easy. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Now, what do we do for the output side? I have to connect R L. So, what should I do? Again, think back to what we did the first time with the common source amplifier, and then now I have to 
I want to turn M1 into a common source amplifier. I have connected the input source to the gate. Okay. Now I have to also connect the load. So how do I connect it? What should I do? Capacitor. That's it. So we do this. Is that good enough? That's it. What will be the incremental output voltage now? In this case, incrementally, what is the voltage here? Zero. Okay. So the output voltage will also be zero. So what should I do? I mean, there's no difference between this and that, right? So basically, I have exactly the same thing there. So I need to have exactly the same structure over there also. Okay. So I need to have a drain bias resistor or an inductor. Okay, I go with resistors usually and this 4 volts has to change to 4 volts plus I naught times RD and I have to AC couple the load. Okay. There is no difference between the original common source amplifier with constant VGS bias and this. Okay. The only difference is how the VGS bias is generated. Originally, we did it with this R1 and R2 which is equivalent to 3 volts in series with a resistance R1 parallel R2 and we AC coupled it. Now we are doing it with this I naught and the diode connected transistor. Again, I have to AC couple it there. The only difference is the diode connected transistor offers a very small incremental resistance. So I have to connect an extra resistance in series. Okay, So that is for the input side. The output side, there is no difference at all. What you have here and what you have there must be exactly the same. Okay, I have to have enough VDS so that it remains in saturation and I have to AC couple the load to the drain. That is all. Okay. So, if I redraw the whole thing a little more neatly, I have my input source here RS, RG, C1, and I have the drain bias resistor over there. Okay. The whole point is that M0 and M1 are identical to each other. So, M1 will be biased at a uh, current of I0. Okay. And just to remind you, by the way, this VDD of course means that there is a voltage source here of value VDD. In the very first case where we had a common source amplifier with fixed VGS bias, what we had done was this point here, instead of that part, we had Okay, this was VG, whereas now that is VG. Okay, so that's the difference. That's all. So, huh? No, the load resistance is the representation of whatever comes after this amplifier. So you will presumably make the amplifier so that you connect something to it. Right? So, no, I mean if you have the load such that you can actually connect it like this it's all well and good then you don't need this rl that rl will appear here and in fact that's better because all of this current will go in there this rd is only wasting current right the incremental current provided from the mos transistor is getting divided between rd and rl ideally you would have liked to have an open circuit here so that all of this current goes into there so one way to do that is to use a very large inductance which we said is infeasible because of uh, bulkiness so now we need uh, this rd okay rd is the extra component rl is the essential load Yes. Ah, you tell me what is the condition RG? What is the goal of RG? Why did we connect RG? I oh, know 1 by ZM is fine, but what was happening if we didn't connect RG? What was the issue? I mean, if there is no issue, why connect it, right? Then
So why did we connect RG there? Or without RG, you derived. Did you derive the expression? What was the expression for the incremental voltage at the gate? That one, right? So that's much smaller than VI. Okay. What will be the voltage with RG in place? So, in fact, let me rewrite it as V i times 1 by G m, 1 by G m plus R s. Okay. Now, with R g in place, how will this get modified? I will get plus R g and plus R g and I want this number to be close to V i. So, what should be the condition on R g? Yeah, how much is very large? Much greater than R s basically. R s plus 1 by G m, but 1 by G m we expect to be anyway a small quantity. So, R g must be much greater than 1 by R s. Sorry, uh, 1 by G m plus R s that is what I had meant to write. So, R g is much greater than R s and now you can also evaluate the constraint on C 1 and C 2 and so on. Okay. Constraint on C 2, what is it quickly? We have evaluated it many times now. What is the resistance that appears across it in the incremental picture? Huh? R L parallel with R D? No. R L plus R D. Okay. So this point, the this line is the same as the small signal ground. So R D plus R L is what you see. Condition is exactly the same as before. Okay. Please anyway think about the circuit and evaluate all these constraints then we will continue from there.